You had said that you're studying languages a little bit, and you, um, I heard you mention that you did, was it Duolingo? Right. So I did the free version of Duolingo for a while, although I think it was early January they had a sale, so I went ahead and um, signed up for that and have been enjoying it. I enjoy doing it a lot more with the paid version just because otherwise you only get five mistakes and then you don't get any more tries unless you go to the practice room and it's like, oh man, I feel so bad about each mistake. So this way I could just make a mistake and go, oh, oh well, doesn't matter. I have endless hearts. Would you ever do live classes? Yeah, in fact, today, Today, I just signed up for two classes, an it- Italian class and a French class. Um, they're remote sessions through the community college, but I'd also done recently, one well, the last couple of years, I did two sessions of French classes you know, in the classroom with the teacher and other students, and um, I did two or three sessions of French so I love. when yeah I d- so I go there I still it's before I've even opened my mouth that will speak English to me it's like okay there's just I don't know I hear it's in everything like our posture just how we hold ourselves how I don't know what it is it wasn't just my shoes and my clothing I don't think I think it's the whole thing they can tell but even if they speak to me in English then unless it's something like okay I'm trying to figure out my Airbnb and how to work the cable television then if if they can speak English I'll speak English but otherwise I try to speak anything but English like like you said, your your French friend speaking with the Italian, even though he doesn't speak Italian. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I love that you're a lifelong learner. Like you went and got your law degree, um, and now you're doing languages and you're signing up for classes. Um, that's so cool. Yeah, I was going to take a Greek class. Um, this summer but unfortunately the enrollment wasn't enough for the community college I don't know how many students they need you know if they need five people to sign up and there were only three or four of us uh, because I thought well I don't currently have any plans to go to Greece but if I study it I'm sure that something could happen right I've never been never been there so one of these days but um yeah, when we went to India a couple different times, I tried to learn a little bit of Hindi, or we went to Germany, so try to learn a little bit of German. I have a dear friend uh, who's quite a bit older than me. She was my college boyfriend's mother, actually, and went to go visit her where she lives in Basel, Switzerland. And, like, oh, everyone here just they speak five languages or so. So yeah. that was when I was about 40 and then went home. It's like, okay, I got to, I got to start taking some languages. So I, at that time I took, I think German and French and whenever we go someplace beforehand, I'll try to take a class or do Duolingo. I wanted to learn a little bit of Catalan to where, what they speak in Barcelona. They speak Spanish there as well, but Catalan would be the first language or um, the language of, you know, pride that they weren't able to speak under the uh, the, the regime. But the, the same, or the, died in 1975 or so, the Spanish dictator, having a mind blank. So anyway. Oh, I don't, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh when they could speak their language again, you know, there's a lot of national pride with Catala and it's kind of a, it has some influences from French, some from Spanish, but it's its own distinct language. So I'd love to learn some of that, but with the pronunciation, my book doesn't have the pronunciation guide. So 
I'll watch the YouTube here or there. So, and all all right. this studying, and I took Spanish in high school and college. I still don't speak anything fluently um, other than English. So, <laughs> but maybe maybe if I keep going and doing these month long trips in Europe, just learn a little bit more and more. Is it? Are you? Would you say you're like moderately able to speak other languages where you can kind of get by, or? Un peu français parce que euh, je veux parler la langue de le pays. Vraiment? Oui? <laughs> non? <laughs> non. <laughs> Une bière? <laughs> Une bière, s'il vous plaît? <laughs> Very good. That's uh, awesome. Good. Get, an, get by enough to say bonjour, madame. And that's one of the things, too, in addition to learning the languages, trying to learn some of the local customs. So it's very rude, for example, if you just walk into a store, like clothing store, and start looking around shopping like we do here, there. You make your eye contact with the proprietor and you say, bonjour, and not just bonjour, but bonjour, madame, bonjour, monsieur. So it's... It was a little bit more relaxed in Brittany, but definitely like in Paris last time I was there, you want to be very formal and make sure you have your s'il vous plaît and bonjour madame, merci madame. Really? I, and they don't man, just, I the other thing I thought was interesting, you know, here, like you might be walking down the sidewalk past a perfect stranger, maybe smile or say hi. France, they just think you're playing crazy. Like you just keep walking. There's no and then these little niceties, or if you're at the grocery store or through the checkout, it's not like, oh, hey, how are you today? Oh, how's your <laughs> day been going? You know, it's like, <laughs> bonjour, madame. <laughs> Very more business like, you know, much more. Yeah. Powerful. Right, right. Um, our friends kind of, I noticed that they, well, I guess I shouldn't say he because he was always the same, you know, but our friend from America that moved over there, she has this wild, bubbly personality and then she still does. But I noticed her being more French, if you will, and the way she conducts herself. But she lived there for like eight years, you know. Right. And it's she is that. fluent and they spoke French. So I think she just kind of that was kind of her personality became that. Or more so, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, and she must have been drawn to it that she went abroad to study and yeah. language, decided to fall in love and stay. Isn't it? It's kind of like a dream. I didn't know I was going to be in love with Europe until I went, you know. Mm-hmm. And, but once you go and see it, it's like, wow. Like, you said that you were in a 400-year-old pub which is like almost as old as the United States. And right. so you see things over there that kind of blow your mind when you think about how old it is and the history and the culture and all the people that have walked in and out of that place. Right. It's and pretty just sweet. like you said, you know, like Venice not always been part of Italy. That's kind of, I don't know, all, like all that history and not just the Italian history, but going back, it's, it's hard for me to fathom or even follow. I don't think Italy was unified as Italy until sometime in the 1800s, I want to say. And okay. so, yeah, but the, the history goes back so much further. Uh, it is, it is amazing. And to be someplace like, wow, look at this old beam. We were at one place in England where we stayed during my husband's walk. And you, you had to bend bend your head down to get through the old door that came up to about my nose and uh, the old exposed beams. It's just so, like, wow, wow. This, yeah, I mean, you, you look at stuff over there that was built so long ago and you think they could never build that today. Right, uh, which is right? like this boring rectangular building today, and it looks like hand carved. 
Right. Like it took a generation to probably build this building that yeah. is still standing and basically like hundreds of years old. It's not perfect condition, but it's not like it would look in today's world, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to get back to Paris because I understand that Notre Dame is reopening quite soon. There was that big fire several years ago and yeah. the roof off. And so they've, brought back artisans and I understand doing things like even making some of the tools using the same tools that would have been used back in the day. So when I was in Paris before the fire, I never actually went inside Notre Dame, but now that I understand, gee, that won't always be there next time. I'll definitely, I want to go inside. Did you walk by it? We walked by it yeah we walked by it before the fire and then recently we walked by it after the fire and you know, had all the scaffolding up and everything um so still attracted a lot of people even just being able to stand outside and look at it is all that stuff but you could still see some of it 